competition and a desire to succeed in the marketplace have made America great. But that ethic is being eroded by a culture of, where's mine? In the big finish tonight, it's the right wing's weak argument. Tuesday night, Fox News' Bill O'Reilly spouted some interesting statistics about welfare. He waxed poetic about life in 1962 and wrongly boasted that only 6% of Americans were on welfare. Census data shows it was actually closer to 12%. But O'Reilly's sad, sad families lived modestly, had fun, and appreciated what they had. He says America was stronger back then. O'Reilly's just one of a crowd of Republicans, including Mitt Romney, who repeatedly claim President Obama is weakening America or worse. Instead, he's making us an entitlement society where people think they're entitled to what other people have. He is systematically destroying the work ethic. How? By the narcotic of government dependency. We've gotten to be a society where, where we don't encourage the work ethic. We explain why dependency is just fine. We're creating this sense of economic dependence, which uh, to me is a form of modern 21st century slavery. We call this a zombie lie because it keeps coming back to life. We found versions of this same rhetoric about dependency dating back to the 1800s. But O'Reilly's not wrong that more people have enrolled in government assistance since the 60s. He claims 35 percent of households are now on federal aid. That's wrong. It's closer to 19 percent, according to the latest census. And here's the real lie. The system doesn't make people dependent. Enrollment goes up during recessions when people need it. Enrollment goes back down after the recession. And what they don't tell you is 65 percent of recipients take assistance for only a few months or a year. I know I was on assistance. What they don't tell you is that there's at least one working adult in 48 percent of households with children on food stamps. Only 13 percent don't have jobs. At a time of national economic crisis, when so many people are struggling to find a job, Republicans are calling the country weak. Americans dependent and repeatedly criticizing millions for their work ethic. Let's bring in Jonathan Alter, MSNBC political analyst and columnist for Bloomberg View. Let me get right to the point, Jonathan. Does welfare make Americans dependent? Well, first of all, we don't have welfare anymore. We, we got rid of welfare uh, in 1996 with right. welfare reform. Up to that point, there was an argument that was a pretty persuasive one that, that uh, aid to families with dependent children, AFDC, did create some dependency. But then we moved under the Clinton administration to a welfare-to-work program. And now what our system does is it rewards work with the earned income tax credit, which you get if you work, and it helps... Uh, the working poor come up to a reasonable standard of living because this economy is no longer providing a middle class standard of living without some help. So the idea that these are deadbeats who are getting money from the government uh, and sit, sitting on the couch, it's not it's not factually true. Absolutely. Uh, and you remember that Peter Edelman, uh, a noted liberal, left the Clinton administration because he had arguments. So we know that there were arguments about what the Clinton administration was going to do to poor people by severing the ties with the aid to the uh, families with dependent children. But here's the point. The point you made so powerfully is the fact that there has not been a dependence established in the last several years, but there's been an escalation of numbers of people on the roads because there's been economic downturn in the economy. Um, and a lot of non-black and Latino people are on well. What they're Most talking about is food stamps. We really shouldn't call it welfare. Right. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, basically food stamps so, because the economy, even if you're working, if, if it, you're not making enough to feed a family. Sure. And so it, it, Democrats and Republicans, by the way, Bob Dole right. was one of the biggest backers of the food stamp program. They were the ones who, who got this through just, just to give people a little bit of a break, a little sure. bit of help. So that's what's surging right now. And on the other dependency issues, what they're talking about, and looking back to 1962, that was before Medicare and Medicaid. If you got sick and you didn't have money, you died. Let me ask you if this. You were, right. If you were old, you were poor. Right. You know? Now, we've fixed some of those things. Is O'Reilly saying that's a bad thing we've done as a country? Of course. And, and of course, none of it has anything to do with Barack Obama because he hasn't put in new entire. Well, this is why I want to ask you. We've got about a minute left. Look, all of these programs that the Republicans are espousing that make people need to go to get food stamps and other forms of help, uh, then they d deny the people or at least denigrate the people who have to have support because of their policies. I mean, right. there's a well, relationship that they don't okay, want to deal so with. You, so what they don't like is Obamacare, right? So you could argue that is in some ways a new entitlement that people are entitled 
to but that hasn't insurance. led to the rolls and, and being is, swollen. And is this somehow some notion that what? Uh, if you if you get sick, that's your fault. Right. That you're weak of character because uh, you, you know you're in a culture of dependency because you want to have some some insurance if you get sick. So what they're trying to do is just create another argument, to, which I think and, and has a racial dimension to it. Right. Because when Ronald Reagan talked about welfare queens, that had a, a racial dimension. They're trying to tag Obama with this notion of uh, he's the, the welfare president, the right. food stamp president, and it's got to end at the polls this November. There it is, Jonathan Alter. Yeah. Thank you so very much. That's, That's the Ed Show. I'm Michael Eric Dyson in for Ed Schultz.